We're going to take you on a road trip today. We got to head to Kingston and pick up a few things uh, in preparation for our paint job. Why don't you come along with us and we'll uh, have a little chat on the way. I thought today while we're going to be spending a few hours on the road, maybe we can have a little chat about buying a boat. A lot of the people who watch our channel are sailors already, but some of you I know are people who want to sail, just never had the opportunity. I want to give you a few tips on finding that first sailboat, or maybe even your second sailboat. Debbie and I have owned from a 16-footer up to a 41-footer, and uh, kind of everything in between. We really like refurbishing boats, and so my uh, boat buying tips uh, might include a little bit of elbow grease, which is uh, how we've always done things. We've never had a really big budget for buying boats. Uh, we've always had, uh, you know, four children at home and a mortgage and, and uh, payments to make. And so we've had to get creative in order to have a good boat to uh, do some cruising in. Tip number one, try and find boats that aren't easily accessible. Maybe a few miles off the beaten path, maybe boats that are in people's backyards that need to be transported, uh, maybe boats that are even in an adjoining country. For us, we're in Canada, so boats that are in the U.S. Uh, so sometimes in specific areas, certain types of boats are being used and they're more popular. And in other areas, those same boats don't hold a lot of value. For instance, if you go to Florida with a 40-foot boat, you're more apt to sell it easily than if you were to go to Florida with, say, a 26-foot boat. If you come up into Canada, into the Great Lakes, 26-foot boats are still being sailed. Tip number two. Boats that have owners that are ill or getting too old to sail or moving out of the country tend to sell a little cheaper. Not that you want to take advantage of people in their time of need, but if you're trying to buy a boat at a good price, purchasing them from people who want to get rid of their boats quickly is one of the best ways to save some money. A number of the boats that we've owned over the years have been in that very situation. And I want to tell you that a lot of these boats as well had already languished in the yards for a few years. They were good boats at one time. The owners had lavished all kinds of attention on them. But in the few years before we bought them, not so much. So if you're willing to put in a little bit of elbow grease, you can quite often get a boat that is well cared for and well equipped even. One thing I want to say about that kind of a situation is that ultimately the individual is still more important than their boat. So if you deal with them with a bit of grace and a bit of sensitivity and show some kindness towards them, not for personal gain, but just out of human decency, uh, quite often uh, you can get a reasonably priced boat in good condition. Tip number three. Get yourself some back issues of magazines like Good Old Boat, Gam Magazine is a local one here. There are other ones that are, I, know, I know are local in the US. Uh, sailing magazines, there's a few of them in the Chesapeake. There's a few in Florida. Um, 
There's also online sites like uh, sailboat listings. And these uh, media have dates on the advertising. Owners are trying to sell their boats directly and there's a date that shows when they started looking for a buyer. If you contact some of these people, you will find individuals who were unsuccessful in selling their boats. Now be forewarned, sometimes they were unsuccessful for a reason, but if you're willing to put in a little bit of effort, and uh, perhaps the boat was a little inaccessible or something like that, or, or the guy was not particularly easy to deal with, um, sometimes you can find a person who's basically just given up trying to sell and has put it out of their mind and there's a great opportunity for you to step in and purchase that boat at a discounted price. Tip number four. Do your homework. Lots of people go out looking for boats without really a specific boat in mind and I think uh, sometimes you're able to go out and buy a boat because you've looked for that specific boat. And I'll give you a couple of examples. Deb and I went out uh, and bought a 30-foot boat when we were upgrading from our 28-footer. A, a nice modern 30-footer with lots of room down below to uh, accommodate our, our family. And we bought it in uh, the U.S. Uh, it was at the very end of Long Island. So first of all, a little inaccessible. But also, we had done our research and we realized that an S2 9.2A, which is their aft cockpit version boat, is a very well built boat. And the accommodation on those boats is quite big for their size. So we did our, our research. We spent about a year looking at different boats. And that's one model we came up with. And then we began our search in earnest, looking for a specific model. So when we went to look at the boat, we knew all of its idiosyncrasies. We knew what the prices were in the market, you know, what we were able to get for it if we were to fix it up. And we found that boat that was, uh, the, the uh, marina that was selling it was not super well acquainted with, and they were selling it at a dis discounted price. It was not in super condition, but it was a diamond in the rough as well. Uh, no real damage had been done, just cosmetic stuff. And uh, by changing a water heater and doing a little bit of woodwork down below, we were able to clean that boat up and uh, use it for about a year, year and a half. And uh, then we sold it at a pretty tidy profit. So know what you're looking for, do your homework in advance, and then search for a boat that suits you rather than whatever happens to come your way. Tip number five, read between the lines. When you're reading an ad for a boat that's being sold by an owner, if the ad does not sound as if the seller is knowledgeable, in other words, if in their description of the boat they misname things, or they get the name of, or model of the boat wrong, or uh, they use some terminology that shows that they're not very experienced. Quite often those ads are being written by family members. Perhaps grandpa has passed away, perhaps uh, there's been a divorce in the family, perhaps uh, somebody's bought a boat on a whim and really never uh, never kept it up and never, never uh, kept their interest up. In those situations, you've got an unknowledgeable owner who perhaps doesn't know what they have or perhaps doesn't have the attachment to it, so they just want to be rid of it. And I think that it's a great opportunity for you to find a boat that is uh, has been loved and cared for for much of its life, but has ended up in the hands of somebody who doesn't know what they have. Tip number six, be patient. Too many people rush out 
and buy the very first boat that comes in front of them. And for the rest of their life, they sail that boat without ever really seriously thinking about what kind of sailing they're going to do, what kind of boat will suit them best, what kind of uh, things they want to have uh, come along with the boat, like a dinghy or what sort of electronics they're going to be looking for. Take your time. Know what you want to buy and then patiently search for it. It's out there somewhere. Find that one that suits your purpose as well and you will be much happier with it if you just take your time looking for it. Tip number seven, look for a boat that hasn't been messed with. A stock boat will retain its value better than a boat that has had a lot of modifications. And this seems kind of odd, you know, if you go and look at a boat being sold by an owner, quite often they'll walk you through all the little projects and improvements they've done over the years. And I see this as a negative. A lot of the effort we put into restoring our boats is removing modifications that were made by previous owners and bringing them back to bring the boat back to factory stock. When people buy a nice clean boat, they don't want to see that pine shelving unit you've added, you know, in behind the settees. They don't want to see that little drop-down table that you created in your garage out of a piece of plywood. They don't want to see these things. They want to see a boat that looks like it was just fresh out of the factory. And uh, so when you're buying a boat, good advice would be to try and find boats that can be returned back to factory stock, uh, simply because eventually you're going to want to sell that boat. And boats in that kind of condition, unpainted, you know, which brings me to my eighth tip, don't buy a boat that's been painted. Two of the sailboats that we've owned were painted by previous owners. Sometimes you don't have a choice. I mean, if you find the perfect boat and the only thing about it you don't like is the fact that it's been painted, um, sometimes you gotta jump. Now, our Bristol 411 is a good example of that. I would prefer to have gel coat, but just couldn't find one in our price range that had not been painted. So. Uh, for that reason we bought it. Uh, the S2 9.2A that we bought had also been painted. Um, my preference is to have gel coat and for this reason, again tying in with uh, my preference to buy boats that are factory stock, if it hasn't been messed with, quite often it's still gel coat. If it's been in an accident or been heavily damaged, sometimes that damage can be hidden by paint and uh, boats are usually not painted because they're in excellent condition and they're well cared for. Usually they're painted because they've been out in the sun for a while or they've hit something. Gel coat is very resilient and if you find a boat that's dirty and mossy and chalky uh, and it's still gel coat, there's a, a, a myriad of things you can do to get it back to looking like it's brand new. And we've done that on uh, a good number of our boats. Tip number nine. Some of you might think by contacting a broker, you're gonna to get to see boats that are higher prices. But that's not always the case. Brokers have their fingers on the pulse of the industry. They know where all the older boats are hidden. They know people who are just thinking about perhaps selling their boat but haven't made the commitment yet. They might know of a particular model that you're looking for. Don't disregard using brokers uh, because sometimes you can still get a good deal through a broker. Two of the boats we bought, including uh, the Bristol, were purchased using a broker. Now, uh, in both of the cases where we used a broker, these were boats that these brokers knew of, so they weren't boats that were being heavily advertised. Uh, they were boats that were about to be listed, sort of thing, and uh, it was an easy sale for them. 
and so they were willing to present our offer, uh, which in both cases were uh, somewhat lower than uh, the owner was wanting. And uh, they did a great job for us. They handled paperwork and made it a uh, nice, easy transition. So don't disregard brokerages. Uh, they've got listings, but they've also got knowledge of boats that don't necessarily make it into the listing. Tip number 10. Talk to boaters. Again, this seems kind of silly, but a lot of people strike out on their own with their own preconceptions. Uh, they've done their homework, but aren't willing to really listen to other people and their advice. Talk to other boaters and listen to what they have to say. Go to marinas and chat them up. Early in the year especially, there's lots of people getting their boats ready or late in the season. Lots of people in marinas putting their boats away uh, in seasonal areas especially, uh, like Canada. If I were to go into a marina, say, uh, during the months of April, uh, anywhere in Ontario, there's going to be loads of sailors there willing to talk to me about their boats, willing to talk to me about boats that they know of that might be for sale, willing to point me in the right direction. Listen to other sailors. Know what you're looking for, but be open-minded enough to listen to others and to look at things that are perhaps, uh, perhaps you hadn't considered before. We are uh, right in the middle of the uh, COVID-19 uh, coronavirus pandemic. Um, <clears throat> Deb and I have been self-isolated now for over two weeks. Um, I have been going to the marina and working on our boat independently, uh, so uh, others are not uh, uh, coming in contact with us at all. Um, but I do need some parts, and so I'm going to pop down, uh, and why I'm driving today, I'm popping down to Marine Outfitters, our favorite little uh, spot to get some bits, and um, they've got some uh, stuff waiting for me. I have to phone them in advance of uh, my arrival, and they'll just set the stuff outside. I paid for it by credit card already, so we won't come in, in contact with one another. Hi, and welcome to Marina Outfitters Canada, located at 4033 Bath Road in Kingston, Ontario. Got the I'll show you here. Got the Epiphanus brushing thinner, and we got the little speed wheel for our Raymarine speed sensor uh, that had been crushed by uh, the strap of a travel lift, I think, somewhere in its life. Not not here, not by us, but anyway. Another little job done. Uh, so in another, another month's time our order of paint is going to arrive. Uh, we've been working with Epiphanus and uh, Marine Outfitters on an order and uh, that order will be placed as soon as we get some of this brushing liquid onto the hull and make sure that it's not going to lift the old paint off of the surface. So. That's an experiment we'll do in the next day or two, and uh, we'll bring you folks along. Anyway, it's been great uh, traveling with you, and uh, I hope you're all doing well during this uh, difficult time. Um, I know uh, many of you are unable to even launch your boats, so our sympathy uh, to all you sailors who are uh, stuck at home. And uh, we hope uh, that we emerge as a country and a, as a world, really, 
uh, from this whole difficult time is stronger and better and perhaps more sensitive to each other's needs. Uh, look after the old folks while you're out there. Thanks for coming along and uh, we'll talk to you next week. episode of Jay Leno's Garage. <laughs> Today on Jay Leno's Garage, we'll be driving a 2013 Volkswagen Jetta. A visceral driving experience. Talk to me.